Hello everyone, welcome to BI Consulting Pro. In today's video, we will discuss about secure your Azure storage account. So in this video, you will get to know everything about the security features for your Azure account. But before going further, these are the answers of the questions that I asked you in our last episode. So you can pause your screen and have a look. Azure Storage Account contains a range of security features that ensures that the data your organization stores is both secure and audible. Understanding these features will help you to ensure that you meet business compliance requirements. By default, all data that is stored within an Azure Storage Account is automatically encrypted by storage service encryption with the 256-bit advanced encryption standard Cypher. The decryption of the data is managed automatically and does not impact the performance of the data. You should ensure that any data that you move between Azure and a client is secure using HTTPS communication over the internet. This can be enforced in an Azure storage account by enabling the secure transfer option. Access to the storage account can be managed by keys or shared access signature to provide a greater degree of control over the level access that can be assigned to an application. Azure Storage Accounts also supports Azure Active Directory and role-based access control to limit who can access the resources within the Azure account. You can also audit Azure Storage Access by using the built-in Storage Analytics service. Storage Analytics logs every operation in real time and you can search the Storage Analytics logs for specific requests. With the range of security features available in Azure Storage Accounts, you will have the tools to ensure your data safe. In Azure, you will find these type of security features. That means encryption at rest, encryption in transit, course spot, role-based access control, and audit access. So most of the data is generated or consumed by custom applications. Let's take an example like a contour so. The applications are written in various languages that can be Java based, .NET based or any other language. Azure storage accounts can create authorized apps in Active Directory to control access to the data in blob and queues. This authentication approach is the best solution for apps that use blob storage or queue storage. For other storage models, clients can use a shared key or shared secret. This authentication option is one of the easiest to use and it supports blobs, files, queues, and tables. The client embeds the shared key in the HTTP authorization header of every request and storage account keys to validate the key. And the storage account validates the key. For example, an application can issue a GET request against a blob resource. So, under the access key, you will find your different keys, your name and other your connection strings. You can get the key one, key two from your account and you can start using them. Let's first have a look where you can find your storage account keys. As you can see right now, I'm on my Azure portal and here you will see I have different resources that I have used in my past. And here, the very first you will see demo storage account Azure. So I'll click on this. This is my storage account which I'm using and on my left hand side you will see there are the different options available and one of them is security and networking. So here you will find this option access keys. You can click on it and here you will also find this definition. Access keys authenticate your application's request to this storage account. Keep your keys in a secure location like Azure Key Vault and replace them often with new keys. The two keys allow you to replace one while still using other. Remember to update the keys with any Azure resources and apps that use this storage account. So basically, whenever you are going to use your storage account, like your blob, SKUs, file storage or table storage, that time, in order to authenticate your app, to use that storage account, you need to provide these keys. 
and also for the several security reasons you can change them periodically or if someone hacks into an application and gets the key that was hard coded or saved in the configuration file you should regenerate the key so now we have seen how to use our access keys now we are going to understand the shared access signature you should know that as a best practice you shouldn't share storage account keys with external third party applications if these apps need to access to your data you will need to secure their connections without using storage account keys for untrusted clients use a shared access signature a shared access signature is a string that contains a security token that can be attached to a url use a shared access signature to delegate access to storage objects and specify constraints such as the permission and the time range of access you can give a customer a ss token or shared access signature for example so they can upload pictures to a file system in azure blob storage separately you can give a web app permission to read those pictures in both cases you allow only the access that the application needs to do the task and after a certain time that access can be revoked so that's how we use the shared access signature instead of access keys over here you will see shared access signature on your azure portal and here you will find the definition as well what is shared access signature what it does do and here also you will see allowed services which are services that you want to allow to the end user or your customer or maybe your stakeholder anyone then they can use these services then you can also allow them allowed resource types so if you would like to allow them to use them then you can also tick them then there are the permission what kind of permission you want to give them or then there are the different other options the one very interesting point over here and this is a very important fact for your exam as well they would ask you okay you want to allow to access one of your application or your storage account for a certain period of time by your customer then which type of access you should use so here you can see that you can basically mention what should be the start time of using it and what should be the end time and beyond that there would be nothing then you can also allow by IP addresses so you can mention over here then there are the protocols whether you want to use the HTTPS and HTTP or only HTTPS and then this is signing in so whether you want to select the key one or key two so those are all the kind of key information that you need to understand shared access signature by default storage account accept connections from client on any network to limit access to selected network you must first change the default action you can restrict access to specific ip addresses ranges or virtual networks as i shown in the shared access signature as well so let's see how to do that very first you can come directly to your azure portal as well or just go over there click on your azure storage account once you are into your azure storage account you will go to the networking here you can see you have security plus networking once you are over here click on this networking tab now to restrict traffic from selected networks you can use selected networks over here only which is this option or all networks depends on you but now our main intention over here to use only the selected network so we can use over here once you will use that then you can start adding your virtual networks over here or if you have existing you can use this existing virtual network or the new virtual network not only that you can use this firewall option here you can allow your ip addresses that should come and then there are the resources type which type of resource you want to allow or use them so all these are the options over here once you are done with this then you can or let's say use like this all then you just need to click save and then you are done now we are going to understand advanced threat protection for azure storage azure defender for storage provides an extra layer of security intelligence that detects unusual and potentially harmful attempts to access or exploit storage accounts this layer of protection allows you to address threats without being a security expert or managing security monitoring system security alerts are triggered when anomalies in activity occurs 
These security alerts are integrated with Azure Security Center and are also sent via email to subscription administrators with details of suspicious activity and recommendations on how to investigate and remediate threats. Azure Defender for storage is currently available for blob storage, Azure Files, and Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2 only. Account types that supports Azure Defender includes General Purpose V2, Block Blob, and Blob Storage accounts. I have already explained in my previous videos what are the different kinds of Blob services we have. Azure Defender for storage is available in all public clouds and US government clouds, but not in other sovereign or Azure government clouds regions. So let's see where you can find this Azure Defender and how you can enable this. We are over here again on my portal where I am in the networking tab. But what we have to do now we have to go in the security plus networking tab again. And here you will find this security. So you have to just click on this security. So once you will click on security, you will come on this tab or this view. And here you will see this option enable Azure Defender for storage. So you have to enable it from here and then if there would be any recommendation it's going to appear at the bottom part. So let's click on this. It will take some time to enable Azure Defender for your storage account and as you can see on my screen it's been enabled. So whenever there would be any threat, any anomalies or it would detect like any unusual, uh, unusual traffic into your Azure storage account it's going to give you the recommendation and even administrators would get the email as well. Now let's check the knowledge. You can pause your screen and have a look at these questions and help me to answer these. I'm going to provide you the answers of these questions in our next video. I hope you liked today's video. If you have any concern, questions, then please do let us know in the comment section. And don't forget to subscribe our channel and hit the bell icon for all the latest updates and videos.